Hello world, welcome to another episode on the fourth heritage mindset. Today I'm continuing the book review series by hosting my fifth guest, Mr. Fajio Mande from Uganda. We shall be talking about his take, uh, his views on my third book, Beyond the Fourth Heritage, the Ugandan edition. I had written uh, a major one, but then I made a Ugandan edition just to make the point more clear uh, at home to people in Uganda. Uh, but the messages are really uh, global. And they talk to everyone, Africans and worldwide. Without wasting uh, much time, Mr. Fajil Mande, you're most welcome to the Fourth Heritage Mindset. Thank you very much. And thank okay. you very much, everybody watching around the world. Yeah. So the first question I'd like to ask you is, can you introduce yourself? Whom are you and what do you do? Well, my name, you have already said, Fajil Mandi. I am 73 right now. I'll be seven. I mean, I'll be 73 on the 11th November. So I count myself already 73 or very few days left. Um, I'm a Ugandan. I'm a teacher by profession, but I also do a lot of other things, not just teaching in the class. I've taught outside, inside the classroom, throughout the school system, up to university. I have also taught uh, outside the classroom, in the community, and so on and so forth. I am an actor, I am an, an author, I am a writer of books, both self-help books, and I'm also a writer of plays, because I'm a dramatist by training and also by practice. Mm. Although these days I don't act a lot, mm. but uh, I am an actor. I am also a father of uh, six grown-up mm. um, men and women. My youngest born was uh, born in 1974. So you can see mm. they are grown up and I'm a grandparent of uh, 18 grandchildren. Mm. And uh, I really love my country, Uganda, and I love Africa. And I believe I have a role to play and I've been trying to play that role Mm. in order to enhance the advancement of Uganda and Africa as a whole. And of course, I'm a love of the whole world. I believe in a peaceful world where we can live uh, together, mm. although we are very different, but essentially we are the same. We are human beings. The differences mm. are really very superficial. And mm. I'm not one person who doesn't glorify mm. those small, small differences. I think the greater thing is that we are human beings and mm. we love to live a happy mm. life. And we love to 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 live for as long as we can. That's me. okay. Okay. So that's Fajr yeah. Mandi. Yeah. Thank you for that introduction. And I think you're very you're being very humble because uh, you're more than that. The way I got to know you is uh, maybe for my viewers, I need to disclose this: is I read your book, uh, Self Engineering, and I loved it. And uh, you came to be the chief guest at the launch of my book, Beyond the Fourth Heritage in Uganda. Yes. Both the editions, actually, the first one and the second. And uh, the person who recommended you is because he thought what I'm trying to do with the books is in line with you as a teacher, as a community leader. And uh, we grew up with you as a school inspector in Uganda, and we all knew the disciplined disciplinarian Fajil Monday, and it was a great pleasure to come to the same table and have a common purpose vis-a-vis -vis my book and your life. And so for that, I appreciate that we are partnering in this venture of uh, trying to change African mindsets. Um, in regard to the actual book, uh, how can you summarize it for those who haven't read the book, Beyond the Fourth Heritage? Beyond the fourth heritage. Well, first of all, the book raises the question of how can we develop Africa? Or put it the other way around, mm. that Africa was once the source of the first civilizations on Earth. Mm. Mm. So it raises slightly the question, how did we lose that? But most important, how can we regain and develop and sit on the same at the same table like other great nations in the world? That's a major thing. Mm -hmm. Secondly, 
the book really raises the question, and I think I've put it before in some of my presentations about the same, the same topic, mm. is that we were not deprived by the creator. We have virtually everything. First of all, we are human beings, and we have nothing short of, mm. uh, short of mm. which other people, other humans have got. No, mm. we have the same brain, same size, mm. same body parts. We have everything. And on top of that, Uganda and Africa is endowed with the natural resources, the mm. best climate on earth. Mm. The question is, why aren't we using them well enough mm. in order mm. for us to be, to enjoy life maximum? Because the creator did not make us to suffer. Creator made us to, he re mm. really made us to enjoy life. Mm. So the question is, we have everything. Mm. The difference is that we have not used that everything, okay, to enhance how long we live and how much we enjoy our life. That's very, very important. Mm. And of course, the book really raises the question of what went wrong. Mm. Very many things went wrong. But the thing that sticks in my head, and really it sticks, because you put it so beautifully, is that there are horrendous things, there are negative things that took place on the continent of Africa. Mm. Can you call them crimes or what? Mm. But there are terrible things that happened mm. to us in our history. Mm. Okay? I think in your book, you call them, the, is it the crimes or something mm. which were carried out by the, uh, the Alia the Ara, and the, the Europeans, mm. okay? Like the thing like, for example, how Africa lost it out mm. because we got invaded and uh, like some other parts of the, of the universe, of the world, mm. we have a population that was displaced completely mm -hmm. displaced and uh, completely disoriented from yes. the original plan. Mm -hmm. Number two, we had this uh, slave trade really mm -hmm. being sold like beasts, like animals and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then of course, we have this uh, colonization which took place, mm -hmm. all right? And yeah. I think that is brought out and it is such a scaring, not scaring, mm -hmm. but I think the point you are making in the book is that mm -hmm. we need to understand exactly what has been committed against us because mm -hmm. you cannot solve the problem without understanding what caused the problem and what mm -hmm. exactly is the problem. And that's what you're mm -hmm. talking about in the book. So mm -hmm. those three crimes, complete mm -hmm. displacement of populations, mm -hmm. death and complete annihilation of some of the, of the yeah. people, then mm -hmm. the slave trade, and then the colonial Geno the genocides against I people. I think the whole thing is so vividly put. All right, mm. it can you cannot read the book without feeling annoyed enough mm. to try mm. and do something. Trying and of course, something. you come out very, very clearly with what uh, what you call your hypothesis, and mm. you're saying we cannot just mourn, we must mm. do things. I mean, mm. there must be certain things we must do. One of them is to understand exactly what is the problem, number mm. two, to understand that we have got all the potentials. Mm -hmm. And the impressions, for example, the six killer mindsets, which you talk about, are just the way we think, but not what we really are. And that's yeah. very, very... And that we can change the way we yes, think. And that we can change that. But you mm -hmm. can only change when you realize that you have, have been, for example, trying to, uh, to talk about the same thing in certain forum. Mm. about our six killer mindsets as we, mm. call, we call them are you getting mm. me and yeah. some people don't believe at the beginning mm. but after when you've gone deep deep then they begin to realize that they have been victims their parents have been victims mm. their grandparents have been victims but mm. it's important to understand that you've been a victim yes but you are not a permanent victim you can recover from that by yeah. doing things differently by thinking differently mm. you know mm. i think yeah. that makes Brought out. So generally for me, this is what I find the book is saying. Mm. The book gives a discovery. Discover who you are. Mm. Discover what went wrong. Discover mm. what you have great, both internally and mm. also physically. And mm. also discover that you have got the potential you can work on or use to transform mm. yourself. And you can go ahead and transform yourself. So for me, that's the yeah. great message. And yeah. that is Information must be carried out by everybody. Mm. Everybody. 
starting with the individual, each person. Absolutely. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And of wow. course, this is one very, very important point which you mentioned mm. that we must rediscover ourselves. Actually, it's not just rediscover, but discovering ourselves because we have never been given an opportunity to really properly discover ourselves. Mm. But you know, the Harry, which mm. you talk about, the self discovery, who am I? What is it I have got? And what is it that I want to be? And how mm. shall I work on it in order to get it? That's a yeah. very vivid message. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. That's a very good summary of the book. Uh, you really articulate the spirit of what I was trying to do. And uh, we've talked about this over and over. And you know, we are interacting with people, some young, young Ugandans who have read this book, and they are showing signs of changing themselves. Uh, I correspond with these young people. Actually, I should say, since you're above 70, you are like my elder. For me, I'm about 40, I'm mid or there. But we are talking about these youngest as well in their 20s. And they've read this book and they are working on themselves to change their minds such that whatever disadvantages your generation had, whatever disadvantages I have inherited, mm -hmm. these young people do better than us. And once we get that in motion, then uh, we shall edge happy people. <laughs> we shall yes. edge happy yes. Africans. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Good. Um, to, to go to the next question, um, uh, what do you think needs to change in our education? Because you are an education expert. What do you think needs to change in our education practically, such that these ideas, which you and I have agreed we cherish, we think if someone gets these ideas in the book, they can get on that transformation journey. But how can our education change? Or how, how can parents uh, train, teach their children in Africa the right way, such that yeah, they don't have these same psychological problems and right. so forth. That's a very good question. During the COVID period, I've been uh, I've thought greatly about this same question. Mm -hmm. One of the mistakes we've been making, and we must change this very quickly. We think generally as Uganda and mm -hmm. now as Africa mm -hmm. that education, okay, takes place only at the formal school. Mm. meaning at the nursery school, the primary mm. school, the secondary school, at the university. No, 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 mm. no. Education, and we must be, realize this, and we must act very fast, takes place in the three traditional schools. Mm. The school at home, the home is the beginning of the mecca of the human being. Through the mm -hmm. parents, mommy, daddy, and mm -hmm. the other relatives. I get me. That's the school. The first school is at home. Then mm -hmm. the longest and the biggest school is the school in the community, mm -hmm. the world out there. I keep giving the example that the moment a child crawls mm -hmm. and walks beyond or at the veranda and looks, uh, squats oh. or sits on the veranda of the house and begins to see outside, mm. that child is beginning to enter the new world of the community. And mm. that's why a lot of parents say, your child, if you don't listen to me, mm. the world will teach you. Meaning the, the lasting school in life mm. is the community. We learn, you and me and everybody mm. on, on, the, in the, mm. you know, on the globe learns a lot much more from the community, mm. what takes place out there. And then, of course, you come out with the third school, which is the formal school. From education. That we must realize now. And this is why people even here in Uganda, they are saying government should open the schools. Government should open the schools because they want to get rid of the children. Mm. They have even forgotten parenting. Are you getting me? <laughs> then secondly, yeah. The second thing we need mm. to begin thinking about seriously and change the way we, we are looking at is what is education? Mm. We have got now the general concept that education is simply doing examinations at every very mm. stages mm. and passing exams and producing results. Mm. Education is not simply passing exams, no. Mm -hmm. So we must re-examine and establish that education is the development and use of the brain mm. in order to solve problems and create situations to enhance life. Mm. 
And that education is actually the creation of the package of you, your energy, your mm. emotions, particularly the positive emotions, in mm. order to make you a transformer. And three, that the education means you must train every part of the body which God gave you in order for you to produce and in order for you to be able to offer service or offer ideas that can enhance the quality of life. So life. in short, we must quickly rethink and move away from examinations mm. as being ex uh, uh, the target of, uh, of education. Mm. We yeah. must come in education to make a human being better, education to make an African better, education mm. to make an African woman better, mm. education to make an African young per person better, education to produce better leaders for Africa. So it mm. must be education for transformation, positive transformation, so that mm. we can enjoy the benefits. Okay, mm. you can yeah. see where some countries have moved, the levels at which they have moved. They're already mm. in the skies, they're already visiting other planets, <laughs> and, so yeah. on and so forth. For us, we are still suffering from jiggers, which mm. is a very, very, very simple thing. So mm. that is the thing that we must move away. One, view the meaning of education, and mm. we must summarize it clearly. Education is making the, the human being produce better, mm. work better. Service mm. offer service better and think better. Are you getting yep. then where that education takes place? That's what we must do. And among mm. those, they have clear things we must mm. retrain our teacher, mm. we must retrain our mother and father today, we must retrain every African to make them think and review mm. what mm. those two questions mean. Are you yep. getting? And mm. we must set systems that will produce that new Africa yeah. to move. The Africa to fit into the global village and to move beyond even the mm. global and into the other, even the yeah. unknown. Are you getting? Yes, yeah. yes. Mm. Wow, mm. that's that's well well put. And uh, uh, I'm doing my little part on this channel every week to bring a video that educates Africans, especially younger Africans. And when they comment to me about some of the the points I educate them about, it's very uh, edifying. I think every person has to do their part. And uh, uh, post-COVID, I've talked with you. Uh, I hope we get to launch an organization that whose mission is just this, yeah? to educate ourselves, our children, beyond the classroom, beyond the classroom, in forums, like seminars, on video, in churches, in everywhere, such that people realize education is not only classroom. Let's change ourselves. Let's become those Africans in this generation who don't whine and moan and complain, but yeah. rather we take matters in our own hands using the brain that we have, which is as good as any other people uh, to develop our societies. So uh, thank you for that point. Um, the, the last question I would like to ask you is um, why would you recommend people to read this book? Uh, you've talked about it, the takeaways, but uh, when you meet someone there, what do you think they can take away? Why would you recommend young Africans or Africans read the book? One, first of all, mm. this book <clears throat> and why you wrote it, mm. you are raising another valid point which you raise in the mm. book itself. You've said that one of the problems Africa is facing is that we don't have the written word. We come from a culture where we stopped at the oral level. Mm. This is one of the first books that has been written by you. And uh, uh, some other people have written, but mm. this is one book which you have written to state the facts as they are mm. about what went wrong for mm. Africa what went wrong with us. Mm. And this is a book where you are stating what caused what went wrong. Mm. And two, you do suggest what should be done for us to change to be better human beings. Now, we know, of course, the question, that is not a question. The fact is, we are a third world country today. Mm. It is a shame to say Africa with all the endowments the creator gave us and all of the human beings we have got, we've got one of the fastest growing mm. populations on earth today, which would mean mm. greater ideas, greater thinking, greater vitality. Are you mm. getting me? Mm. 
Why are we a third world country? So this book must be read by everybody. One, you don't only talk about raising Africa. You talk about changing yourself. A book that talks about how I can change myself mm. is like a blessing from God. Mm. You get me? So yeah. everybody must read that blessing from you and you are basing your arguments in the book, not only on, uh, on just garb on the street. You have done research, you have made mm. observations, you have read other writers' works, you have moved around the world. Are you getting me? What you are stating mm. and what you are quoting is real. Mm. So when you are reading this book, you are not only reading just about a romantic novel or something yeah. like that. You are reading mm -hmm. about how to change your life. Number two, you are reading about something new being said about what you didn't know about Africa and mm. other people. Mm. Are you getting me? So you're making the first discovery because we have never been taught those things. Mm. I went mm. through the whole school system up to university level. Are you getting me? Mm. Just like yeah. you have done. Mm. But we never study those things yeah. in our yeah. system. So this book is an op a window opening you mm. into the world of who you are supposed to be, where mm. you have come from, and mm. where you are supposed to move. Are you getting me? Yeah. So it's a treasure, mm. simply put, vividly put, are you getting me? That mm. every young person, every old person, including people older than me, we should read. Because the struggle of Africa, the struggle of changing me and changing other people is a struggle by everybody. Now, mm. everybody must have the knowledge. And then, of course, last and most important, mm. you've raised a very good point. We have not been in the culture of writing. I said in the introduction, and we repeated mm. it also, that mm. I am a writer. Why do I write? I write so that my wisdom, mm. your wisdom, I get to Mikirunda, mm. yeah. is kept on record. Yeah, okay. preserved. Mm. Just like we are saying, we are doing this program here. It is on record now. When mm. we go and we die, you go and I go, whether mm. you go to heaven or hell, <laughs> and I, you go to heaven because of your contribution. <laughs> are you yeah. getting it? Yeah. Okay. Your record of work will be left behind. So our grand, 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 grandchildren will have a, a thing to read about the wisdom which Kirunda has got, the mm. wisdom which I've got, the wisdom which our human beings have got on mm. earth, the Africans. Mm. I get me. So this is why somebody must read this book. Mm. It's wow. a treasure which mm. should be amped, mm. but mainly be read and internalized, and mm. then after being internalized, practicalized, put yep. into practice. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Thank you so, so much. Actually, uh, two weeks ago, I had uh, uh, someone I featured uh, on this channel reviewing the book. Um, this young man we've worked with, David Muganzi, is, is going to be a doctor next year. He's at university. Yeah. And he said the investment he put in this book, or maybe 60,000 Ugandan shillings, is more contribution to his education than the millions he spent in throughout his education because he's saying the ideas in his book opened up his mind to realize he has to contribute far more than what the education system and the degree uh, say he can contribute and uh, he has gone off to do so many things so your point of uh, uh, anyone when when they read this book of course, there's an African perspective, but it's more individual. Whether you're here or there, if you think you can change for the better, you're thinking. Uh, I try to lay out the steps and uh, propositions and the framework on how you can think and better yourself. Thank you. Uh, the last question is um, uh, for my viewers out there. Uh, what is the parting word? Uh, any message? Uh, a goodbye message to my viewers. They are all over the world. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm. One important message. One, let's read this work. Let us increasingly read works written by Africans. Let's mm. also increasingly read works written by other people because wisdom does not lie only in the hands of an African. Mm -hmm. There are other human beings. There are many, many uh, wise ideas which are, are in the world today. Mm -hmm. But most important, let us remember, 
that it is your responsibility, my responsibility, to initiate the process of changing myself for the better. Mm. That's a very, very important thing. Nobody will come. Very few people will come and lift you up, wash your feet, dress mm. you up, remove the jiggers from your feet. No, clean your face. Mm. People can only come in, and those are fewer, to enhance your abilities. All right? Mm. If this work, let's work on the springboards of development within ourselves. And this is what you deal with here. And that's why you've said young men and young people who have read this book and the ones who have attended our seminars, which we have held. Are you getting me? Because mm. we touch the springboards of, the, of change. Mm. We energize. Mm. We offer different energy. Instead of somebody feeling like a victim, no, you are a victor. Mm. Instead of feeling that you're inferior, no, you are super and superior. Are you getting me? Mm. All right. Instead of thinking that you will only live by copying and copying and copying and copying, no, initiate. Most important message I, I mm. want to end with is mm. that we must remember I think that, not I think. Mm. Presently, I think there is a process which is taking place on earth today in mm. the global village where we are dehumanizing the human being. Mm, mm. particularly through the overuse technology is very good mm. but slowly by slowly mm. presently we have 75 percent of human activities being taken over by robots and mm. artificial intelligence mm. which means actually as my wife puts it mm. the human being is coming to the end of the world mm. we are annihilating the human being Mm. They have, and what is uh, causing that is because the abilities, the natural abilities which God gave the human beings are slowly being completely wiped out mm. and the robot is taking over from the human being. So the human being must be revitalized now, mm. my friend. Mm. Africans will have a population. Mm. And it is good. It's a gift of life. Is mm. the human being. We must strengthen the humanness. We must mm. strengthen the human springboards of development. Yeah. Continue <laughs> developing your innate abilities mm. and continue shining. We can yeah. work along with the robots and mm. artificial intelligence, but we must remember balancing the thing. You yeah. have to continue the struggle of being there, continue the struggle of being there by mm. training and developing yourself. Thank you. Yeah, good. Thank you so much. And uh, in that noble purpose, I hope ideas from this book help people to yeah. be on that journey as human beings. How can you re-identify yourself, re-energize yourself, and live happier and longer lives such that uh, we are happier human beings as God intended us on this earth? Okay. So that's the end of my interview with Mr. Fajil Mande. Thank you so much for everyone who is watching this program. Remember, every weekend I bring you a video whose purpose is to inspire the change of mindsets, especially our African mindsets. As I keep saying, the struggle for our generation is to change our mindsets. Thank you.